Welcome to the cocktail of the day. I think this is about take six, so let's see if I can get it right this time. Uh, today we're going to make a very popular drink, one of the most popular drinks in the world, especially in the English-speaking countries, especially in the United Kingdom, the gin and tonic, uh, sort of their, their national drink, except I'm going to make the American version with ice. Uh, first time I had a gin and tonic made by uh, the British was uh, on one of their aircraft carriers. Uh, they were visiting Abu Dhabi when I was serving as the defense attache there. I know too much information. And uh, they had a tattoo on board the ship, a very fascinating uh, protocol that the British have. And uh, my escort officer asked me if I would like to have a uh, the national drink of England or some Eurofizz, which I think was beer. Uh, I said, no, I'll have the national drink of England. So he brought me uh, what looked like water in a glass and... Uh, I said, uh, he goes, yes, we don't use ice. I said, oh, okay, fine. And uh, I had it. It, uh, it could have used some ice. It was in Abu Dhabi. My God, it was hot, hot. Uh, so uh, the drink goes back to the 1800s. It was uh, invented in India. Uh, at that time, the East India Corporation had a, a royal concession from Elizabeth I. And they were to operate the trade between the United Kingdom, uh, then the British Empire, and India. Now, uh, the company was supposed to focus on trade, not building an empire, but to do that in India, they actually had to impose British rule. Uh, to do that, they created a navy and an army uh, and fought a series of horrendous battles, casualties on both sides uh, against the Indians. Uh, and the British, of course, did not create that empire and maintain it for centuries without knowing how to handle insurrections, Ex with the notable exception of the American Revolution. Um, other than that, they, they did a pretty good job of keeping that empire intact, and the East India Company was no exception. Later on, it was disbanded and taken over uh, by the British government, and of course, the uh, East India Army became the Indian Army, officered by the British. Uh, fine troops, actually, the Indians. Uh, all right, so uh, to do this, I'm going to, I'm going to recommend that you buy good, li good liquor and good mixers. Now, um, probably the lower end of the acceptable tonic is Schweppes, although I sent one of my production assistants downtown to buy me Schweppes tonic water because I was going to make them side by side. But I don't think I'll do that because I don't like plastic uh, because I don't think it keeps the fizz long enough. So, uh, but just to tell you that Schweppes is an acceptable one. What we're going to use is Fever Tree. It comes in glasses. It's a premium tonic. It's very good. It ain't cheap, but hey, you only live once. And I use Tanqueray. I, I like the, the clean taste of it. Now, I, I just had an apprentice sign up for some mixology lessons. And uh, one of the things I impressed on her was that when you find a combination that you like, buy the same thing every time. That way you can produce consistent drinks. Uh, you'll know what they're going to do. Uh, we're also going to use a lime. Very important to make uh, a lime wedge. And uh, I, I've been doing lime wedges all wrong all these years. I just figured out the proper way to do it. So I'm going to show you, and I, and I got this on a, off of a website. Now, pardon my glasses. I don't want to cut my fingers off because I do, I do keep my knives fairly sharp. So you cut it lengthwise like that down. And then this is where it gets slick. He says you cut it on this axis through the middle, but not to the end right down through there. Then when you quarter, when you make a slice for the, the wedge, I'm see, you have the perfect wedge that sits on the glass. Isn't that slick? All right, so let's build the drink. COVID hands, wash them all the time. So put a good amount of ice in here because the one thing you want to keep a gin and tonic is, is cold. Because it's going to, it's going to uh, warm up fairly quickly. Okay, so the mixture I use and what is recommended, and you'll find your own recipe. So we're going to put two ounces of gin, like, like that. And then we're going to put four ounces of this fever tree. Hear that? Fizz, that's what I like. Two ounces here. Another two ounces. And we're going to put our properly cut lime wedge on there. 
However, I personally like the lime squeezed and in the drink. You can stir it around a little bit. Good. And what you have here is the classic gin and tonic. Now, I've seen recipes uh, as high as three ounces of gin and three ounces of tonic. That's a bit strong for me. Uh, I like this. Let's give it a taste. Oh, yeah. Definitely the keeper. So, uh, make a toast to our, our British allies. Say thank you for developing this because I really like it. So, we'll see you next time. And if you've got any suggestions for a drink you'd like me to make, email it. It's all on the credits at the bottom. Thank you very much.